observability is the right answer for the evolution and the journey that SolarWinds has been taking clients on. Being able to see all that information in one pane of glass, being able to organize and, and maintain that, it's a really simple product. Observability gives the customer everything they could possibly want as far as visibility of their key infrastructure. We're in 60 different countries. We have 260 different sites with a whole collection of equipment, and SolarWinds lets us keep track of it. It's just the best platform there is. I'm Crystal. And I'm Brandon. And we're here today to talk to you about hybrid cloud observability. So tell us, Brandon, what, uh, what's going on in the product? Yeah, no, we've got some great new things actually coming out right now uh, in terms of the product here. So uh, we'll have a new release uh, of both hybrid cloud observability as well as, you know, for our Orion customers, a new version that they can upgrade as well. Uh, it will be called, you know, 2022.3. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about what that process looks like going from Orion to hybrid cloud observability. Yeah, no, great question again. And it's as simple as running an upgrade. That's it. It's just like if you were upgrading your existing Orion deployment, you download the executable, you run it, and everything happens behind the scenes. Awesome. That sounds like quick and easy and no hassle. You can just wipe your hands of it when you're done. Exactly. Which we like. Um, so I know that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of effort. We've done a lot of talks about Secure by Design. And um, can we talk a little bit about how Secure by Design played into the building of hybrid cloud observability? Yeah, no, absolutely. And on uh, with in regards to Secure by Design, you know, one of the founding elements, you know, we've put out a lot of different white papers, uh, as well as content around, you know, how we're re-architecting the next generation for supply, uh, supply build systems on that front. And as part of that work, you know, one of the big elements that we did is we, we unified and we centralized, you know, all of the module code down into, you know, what we called internally uh, monorepo or a single repository. And so that allows for a lot of different efficiencies from, you know, little things like the, the installers like a gig smaller, you know, to even the install and the upgrade running faster. Well, that's all really good news. We definitely like when the upgrades go faster. Um, we had a, a session a couple of years ago in Thwack Camp where people were doing their installs at the time while we were doing Thwack Camp, and it was a really big success. So I'm, I'm glad to hear there's more improvements for that kind of process. Absolutely. That's an ongoing effort from us. You know, every release we look at, how can we refine, how can we make that experience simpler, easier, faster, and better? Awesome. Well, you know, a lot of our customers are wondering, you know, is hybrid cloud observability intended to replace Orion or, you know, maybe what are the differences between the two? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is no. You know, hybrid cloud observability is, you know, a better Orion, if you will. Uh, a lot of the feedback, you know, me having been here for, you know, the better part of a decade uh, on that front, I've heard a lot of feedback from the years, you know, from our customers, from our internal stakeholders, uh, things like, you know, each of the modules, you know, having their own charge or licensing metric uh, to uh, things like, you know, uh, uh, deployment flexibility uh, around that on that side as well. So a lot of this feedback that we've heard through the years, we've taken this back in and that's what we launched back in April, which was the hybrid cloud observability. And so, uh, you know, so a couple of the major differentiators are hybrid cloud observability is node based uh, from a licensing. So again, trying to, to, to simplify that. You know, it is a one installer. Uh, it lays down everything instead of having to download NPM or network performance monitor uh, and then download network, network traffic analyzer later and evaluate that. You have to install it, you know, run the configuration wizard, et cetera. How do we streamline that and make that simpler? That's awesome. And having done gone through the install myself, it is very easy. Um, and I have to say that it's a nice improvement. I've also been around the products for a very long time. So it's a very nice and welcome improvement. Um, I also, you mentioned um, evaluation there. So um, I know that we have a new feature called Instant Eval. And with the uh, improvements to the installer and the way that um, everything kind of works now, what does that mean for evaluations? Yeah, so kind of I was discussing a second ago, you know, with... You know, you own network performance monitor, you want to try NetFlow traffic analyzer, you go to the website, you download it, you run the installer, et cetera. Now it's just a click of a button. So when you upgrade to the 2022.3 release, you know, there will be something, uh, a button in there to where, one, if you're an existing module-based customer, you can try out another module. Or if you want to try out hybrid cloud observability, uh, all you do is click that button, We'll, we'll light up the functionality in the UI uh, just like that. You know, the evaluation will run, run for 30 days just like it normally does. 
And then let's say at the end, you're like, you know what, uh, it's great, but I'm not quite ready to move yet. I don't have budget or, or, or whatever the reason may be. It will fall back down to what you own automatically. So again, streamlining, simplifying kind of that experience. That is excellent news. Nothing like having to go back and take a downtime to uninstall an evaluation that didn't quite work out for whatever reason. I mean, there's many reasons things may not work out for that. So that's really good news. I think everyone will be excited to hear about that. And uh, that is for the Orion module based as well as HCO. That's right. So if you're an HCO or hybrid cloud observability customer, let's say you're, you have the essentials edition. All you do is click that button if you want to try advanced. It will turn on that additional capability and functionality uh, within that advanced tier. Uh, again, 30-day eval, you don't purchase or apply a license for advanced, it'll fall back to essentials automatically. So now that we've kind of talked about what it is and what it isn't and, you know, the comparisons to Orion, which we're not getting rid of, um, I just want to kind of take a couple of moments to go into some new features or some of the newer things in the product. So um, let's jump in. With, with something that everyone already likes and exists in Orion, which is modern dashboards and what that means now and, and kind of what we're looking for in the future with that. Absolutely. And so uh, over the past set of releases, you know, you've seen us make incremental changes and incremental improvements here. Uh, you know, we still have the existing uh, dashboarding technology, but we also are shipping the new modern dashboards. And so we're starting to replace some of the old dashboards with this new modern experience. And with the latest releases, we, we also did that with our uh, the configuration management functionality on the network side. So as you see here on the screen is in the new modern experience. And one of the cool things I think about this is uh, what we did is we actually took a blank slate and we went out to a set of our customers uh, that are active and, and uh, very passionate users of, of this functionality. And we just asked them and said, how would you organize it? How would you set it up? What do you want to see? Uh, so that way we're getting and capturing, you know, that real-time feedback from our users. And we incorporated that ultimately into what we're shipping here in this design. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this dashboard, um, as, you know, the replacement for the existing NCM config summary dashboard that was there has been a really big hit. Every time I've talked to someone about it, they've been like, oh, what's this? Do I have this? This is amazing. This is incredible. And I like that we're moving more towards it in the future. It's much more flexible. It's more colorful. You can, you can do a lot more with it and uh, make it look really nice and crisp um, over kind of the old technology. So I'm happy that we're moving more in that direction. Absolutely. And we'll continue to do more here as we move forward into the future. Awesome. And I'll add to that, you know, um, you mentioned that it was from talking to customers. So I'll, I'll tell, I'll just throw a shout out to our user experience team. If you get a chance to do user experience, it has real results in the product. You can see it. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out there to make sure that you take some time to do some user experience if you have time. We appreciate it. Awesome. Well, let's move on to uh, one of our new features, which is SD-WAN monitoring capabilities. Can you show us what that looks like? Absolutely. You know, SD-WAN has been a technology that's been growing and our customers have been increasingly asking for from us. So what we did here is, you know, SD-WAN is a little unique uh, in the respect that, you know, there is infrastructure that is on-premises. You know, that is still very much SNMP based. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you have now a cloud orchestrator or a cloud portal uh, to where you manage a lot of this SD-WAN infrastructure from. And, and that is more API based. And so that, that presents some additional challenges when it comes to adding support for these because each API is different. You know, if you go look at vendor X versus vendor Y, they're completely different in terms of structure, unlike SNMP. Uh, so, it, you know, uh, so we started out with Meraki. Uh, we picked Meraki because we already support it from a wireless perspective, so we can already talk to that API. So it's now just adding in the SD-WAN functionality that we want to be able to visualize. And so in the, in the demo here, as you can see, you know, we go down and we go and drill into the cloud orchestrator. Uh, and so from the orchestrator, you'll be able to see all of the edge devices, you know, that are so associated with that orchestrator and very quickly and easily import them, you know, on that front. And so, um, what you'll see here as well at the orchestrator level, besides kind of a, a, a view around what are the devices or what are the edge devices that are associated there uh, and the performance and status of those. What you'll also see are things like information around the WAN uplink configuration, around uh, you know the the um, the topology. But we're also creating and we added this into AppStack. So now with an AppStack, you see you know servers and containers, but you also see SD WAN orchestrator and SD WAN edge. So that way you can understand the relationships. 
uh, from an application perspective, what SD-WAN infrastructure it's transversing over, et cetera. Awesome. Um, this is a lot of information. I mean, you kind of scrolled through the page there, but there's loads of stuff on there. And uh, I hear that we're going to be looking to add more uh, into it in the future besides Meraki. So That's right. Readers. That's right. So I'm showing you Meraki right now, but the other uh, uh, you know new support that we're announcing here with this release is VeloCloud. And so while I'm showing you Meraki, uh, imagine it was a Velo Cloud, And so that will be available to our customers that are leveraging that technology. But to your point, uh, in the future, we are going to continue to add more, you know, from Vitella, from uh, uh, Palo Alto with CloudGenix, uh, you know, um, HPE Aruba with Silver Peak and, and others. So, you know, we'll continue to move down the list based upon, you know, our customers' demand uh, and continue to add, uh, the, you know, the applicable SD-WAN support. Awesome. This has been uh, really fun to look at. So I'm excited for our customers who get to use it. Um, and more importantly, I'm excited that we're continuing to kind of stay on top of it and, and add these, this functionality as we go. It's, I mean, once again, we really listen. So if you guys are, are interested or if you're leaning towards one vendor over another, let us know. So now we can talk about another feature, which I personally am the most excited about, which is the, the start of our kind of AI ops journey in hybrid cloud observability. Absolutely, so so yeah. I want to hear your take on what that is going to look like with alerting. Yeah, so AI ops, as you touched upon, that's a new capability. And that is, to your point or question earlier, about some of the differentiation or differences between hybrid cloud observability and the traditional Orion products. AI ops will only be available to uh, our hybrid cloud observability customers that are in the advanced edition. So that is one of the, the notable differences there. Uh, but initially, what we're focusing on is anomaly detection on metric-based data. So we went back and, and looked at what is driving the volume of alerts for our customers. Uh, and it's things like CPU, memory utilization, interface utilization. So instead of running everything through uh, our AI and ML um, you know, uh, service, which is a cloud-based service, so this will be running in, in our cloud, in SolarWinds Cloud. And so data from your on-prem uh, hybrid cloud observability instance will be sent up uh, into this AI ops service. It will be run through the uh, appropriate algorithm, and, and the resulting metadata will be returned back to that hybrid cloud observability instance. So it will kind of do a round trip there uh, on that front. And so within the, uh, you know, your on-premises hybrid cloud observability deployment, within the alerting engine, you'll have the ability now to create an anomaly-based uh, uh, alert. So you can go in there and start to say, you know, instead of, you know, CPU, alert me when CPU is greater than or equal to 80%. Real basic example. Yeah. Now you could just say, alert me when CPU utilization is anomalous. Uh, when is it not normal uh, on that front? And so, and as we move forward, we'll continue to look to advance and add more capabilities, start to drive more uh, root cause analysis and uh, on that front from, um, you know, from an anomaly or from a, a, a AI ops perspective. Well, thank you so much for taking us through that. I think I'm really, really excited about the alerting capabilities and the kind of AI ops machine learning stuff that's going to make alerting even better for our customers because I'm always talking about making alerting better and more actionable so you don't have as much noise. Um, and walking us through the demo. And all of the demo we've shown today is available on our public demo. So feel free to check it out for yourself. Absolutely. And look forward to, we'll have many more great updates. And as we uh, release those, we'll make sure to update and share those with everybody. 